Hey guys, Anthony here. Here's another lesson out of Alfred's Essentials of Music Theory. This is Unit 3, Lesson 12 on 18 out of Book 1. Unless you're using the complete version, then you've got all three books in one book. Um, as always, I highly recommend that you have done the work and you have the book before you do this. You'll learn a lot more if you do that. Um, so here we go. Please click subscribe if you haven't already done so. And today's lesson is about the dotted half note. Okay, a dot after a note increases its duration by half the original value. Okay, a good friend of mine, Jason McLean, shout out to him. He let he told me a good way to remember dotted notes is by thinking of it as groups of three of the lower subdivision. Okay, that might sound a little confusing, but if you, what's the smaller subdivision? below a half note and the answer to that is a quarter note right so if that helps you to remember that a, a dotted half note is just three quarter notes in, in terms of its note length and value if that helps you otherwise um, think of it this way a dot after note increases its duration by half the original value so the original value is two beats a dot increases it by half the original value so it adds one to that okay um, you know, if you need to pause it and scratch your head and think about that one for a minute, now would be a good time. Okay, in 3-4 and 4-4, four, four, a half note receives two beats. Because a dot following a half note increases its duration by one beat, a dotted half note has a value of three beats. Okay, so there we go. It's basically a half note plus a quarter note. That's another way you can think about it. Okay, so here we go. Um, you know, if you think about it in 3-4, uh, a dotted half note takes up the whole measure because it's three beats. All right, let's count and clap the rhythm. One, I'm going to give you one, two, three, ready, and go. One, two, three, ready, and go. One, two, I'm going to start that again. One, two, three, ready, and go. Ta, 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 ta. There we go. And now here it is. In 4-4, four, four. take a look at those dotted half notes in 4-4. Four, four. So now they don't take up the whole measure. They only take up three beats. One, two, I'm going to give you one, two, ready, go in 4-4. Four, four. One, two, ready, go. One, oh my gosh, I'm failing today. Let's try that one more time. One, two, ready, go. Ta, 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 ta. how you count those dotted half notes. If you need to review those, pause and go back. All right, let's take a look at our exercises today. Okay, so exercise one. To write one note equal in value, sorry, write one note equal in value to the sum of the notes or rest, okay? So this is basically one plus two equals three. What note equals three? We just learned it. It's the dotted half note, boom. All right, here we've got a dotted half note, which is three, plus a quarter note, one. That equals four. What note equals four? Boom, the whole note. There we go. All right, a quarter rest equals one, plus that's a half rest, which equals two. That's three, so one plus two is three. As we know, that's going to be our dotted half note, which equals three. Notice it says one note okay it doesn't say note or rest all right quarter note plus quarter note that's basically one plus one equals two or a half note okay let's take a look at number two write the number of beats remaining for each exam example so now we're doing a little bit of subtraction so a dotted half note that's basically three minus two for the half note so you have one remaining here's a dotted half note which is three minus a quarter note one so you have two remaining two remaining beats a whole note minus a quarter note that's four minus one or three remaining Oop, that's a funny three but whatever we'll leave it all right we got a whole note minus a half note so that's by basically four minus two equals two so pretty straightforward there you know if if that took a minute for you make sure you review just your different note values and and what they all mean 
Okay, number three. Complete the measures using one note or rest. Count and clap. Okay, now they tell you if they want a rest or a note, so pay attention to that. Okay, so we already have three beat from the dotted half note, so if they want to rest, that's going to have to be a quarter note because there's only room for one more beat. Here we've already got two beats accounted for with the half note, so there is only room for two more beats, and they want to rest, so that's going to have to be our half rest starting on beat three. They want one note, but we only have one beat accounted for, so we're going to have to have three beats in this note, and we know... That's going to be our dotted half note because we just learned it. Dotted half note is worth three beats. All right, now we've already got a half rest, which takes up beat one and two. So now we need something to cover beat three and four. And it's going to be a note because that's what they're asking for. So let's go ahead and put a half note, which is our two beat value right there. All right, they're looking for one rest that covers beats three and four since one and two are already accounted for with those quarter notes. And that's going to be our beautiful half rest on the third space. All right. Lastly, they already have beat four accounted for with a quarter rest and beat one covered with a quarter note. They're looking for one note to fill in the rest of the spots. Beat two and three, that's going to be a half note on beat two. All right, let's count and clap the rhythm. One, I'm going to give you one, two, ready, go. One, two. Ready, go. Ta, 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 ta. Very good. If you struggle with that, go back and do it again. Always count out loud when you're learning rhythms. Trust me, it's the best way to do it. You know, try counting out loud. Try doing the ta's like I do. You know, take it. Take more than one approach to learning it. Maybe you're clapping for some of these, and then maybe for others you're you're doing ta's like I'm doing, or maybe for other ones you're counting out loud. Just you know, f try it a few different ways until you understand it. All right, number three, B. All right, now they're looking for rest, and we're in four four. Or sorry, we're in three four this time, so it's going to be a little different. We've already got a half note, and that covers beats one and two, so we need to figure out what beat three is, and they want a rest. So that's going to have to be our quarter rest, because that's our one beat value rest. Um, note ones are, or beat one's already accounted for with the quarter rest. They're looking for a note that's going to cover beat two and three, and that will be our half note. All right, they're looking for a rest. It's going to be one, two, and three. It's going to be the whole thing. Now you might think, hmm, a dotted half rest, but no, in this case we have to do a whole rest because in 3-4 a whole rest takes up the whole measure. Now, in this measure, they're looking for a note that takes up the entire measure. Now you might think, oh, a whole note since it was a whole rest in that measure, but no, it's actually the dotted half note. Now, for some reason, when they invented music notation, the whole rest is the only rest that's value changes, right? Any other note, like if you need three beats, you got to do the dotted half note. So uh, the whole rest is the only one that changes value. So it's worth three beats in three, four. It's worth four beats in four, four. It's worth two beats in two, four. That's just how it is. Okay, number four. In the example below, draw the grand staff. So I like to take these one step at a time just because it's easier. Um, so draw the grand staff. Remember that it's basically got four parts. You've got to connect with a bar line, right? Then you need the brace. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, as long as people get what you're writing. And there's my treble clef. Laugh all you want. I know it's not perfect. Here's my bass clef. Boom. There you go. So that's the four parts. The bar line, the brace, treble clef, and bass clef. And then obviously you have the stav, the upper staff and the lower staff as well. Okay, now let's see. What's the next step? Add the note stem. So let's just take it a step at a time. Don't be overwhelmed by all the directions. Boom. There you go. Make sure that your stem directions are correct. Right? If it's above or on the middle line, the stems go down. If it's below the middle line of the staff, the stems go up. All right down and this is the one weird one because it's on the middle line but that goes down all right up up 
Okay, so that, I mean, check that off, check that off. Now they want bar lines, okay? So now let's count them out. One, two, three, four. But then you've also got one, two, three, four down here. So you want to drop those bar lines straight straight through the staves like that. Okay, you don't want to you know, have a bar line here and then another bar line here. That'd be super, super confusing for you know somebody who had to read it to follow. Okay, so you've got the whole rest here, and then you've got one, two, three, four quarter notes down there. So we're going to drop the bar line Bing! right there. All right, now we've got a half rest, quarter rest, and a quarter note, and we've got a whole rest down there. So let's drop our bar line right through. Now we've got, oh, I can't believe I did this earlier. I'm sure you were all laughing. I didn't even notice that was a whole note. Um, <laughs> so that is not, that does not need a stem because it's a whole note. So that's four beats. And that's also a whole rest down there. Boom. Draw our bar line there. All right, one, two, three, four for your whole note. One, two, three, four for those. Drop the bar line there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to need our double bar line. So get a thick one and boom, and a single bar line. And there you got it. Okay. So that's done. Bar lines and a double bar line. What's the next step? Write the names of the notes below the grand staff. All right. So we got G. No other notes in that measure. We're in bass clef. Uh oh. G, E, G. Here we go. We've got F, another F up top, E, D, E, and C for the last note. And there you have it. Lesson 12, Alfred's Essentials in Music Theory. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me. I usually respond pretty quickly. And and if, you, if I made any mistakes other than the ones that I corrected, please let me know and I'll fix them in the next video. Thank you very much. Have a good day.